obviously we've had all the hunden drama uh continuing to uh, kind of unfold um and so i'll give you all a summary of that uh, and, and in case you haven't been following it hunden is a coach uh, a successful CSGO coach. He was the coach of Heroic, who were a very successful team in the last 12 months, having won multiple tournaments, including in the ESL Pro League. Uh, and yet, despite their success, they've had something of a fractious relationship. In the first instance, Hunden was caught having cheated um, by abusing a coach bug that enabled him to essentially have a wall hack on one bomb site or one part of the map to give his team a slight competitive advantage. He himself admitted to using this bug. It wasn't speculative. He confessed. He even confessed the games that he used it in. We have all that information. And he was subsequently punished, receiving a punishment of what would have been 12 months, but due to his cooperation, admission, and relatively low impact of the offences, I think because they lost, they certainly lost at least one of the series in which he cheated, he was um, given a reduced sentence. As a result of the goodwill that was generated by his confession, because unlike other coaches, uh, like Starix, who said they couldn't even remember if they cheated or not and tried to lie about it, um, while gloating as other people were banned before them. Um, and also saying, I knew about this cheat years ago because they're clout-seeking wankers. You know, because Hunden had admitted it, took it on the chin, uh, everybody said, oh, all right then, Hunden's not so bad. Plus, he's a legendary figure, he was a meme as a player, but he's done a lot of good work in the scene, particularly the Danish scene, development of young talent. We're all willing to give him a second chance. And Heroic saw that community reaction, and they gave him a second chance. And what we can now say is an, it was a very inadvisable move. Uh, because they decided, rather than fire him, which would have made sense at the time, uh, they actually instead um, d kept him on in a secondary analyst role, so he wasn't able to have direct coaching influence over the team or travel with them to events at that time, including the win at ESL Pro League, but he was still involved in the org while he served his ban and then was reinstated as a coach. After he was reinstated as a coach, for whatever re reason, the relationship broke down. And we'll go into Hunden's version in just a little bit. But the reaction broke down. He wanted to leave uh, Heroic. Heroic said, uh, we really want to keep you and we don't want you to leave. Will more money help? Will a bigger house help? Will a car help? You know, what, what do we need to do to induce you to stay? Hunden said, Not, none of that. I just want to leave. There's been a breakdown in our relationship. And so as we went into IEM Cologne, remember the biggest competition we've had this year, and outside of the major, potentially the one big fucking LAN event we're going to get this year, uh, Hunden didn't travel with them. The org said there's been a breakdown in trust. We aren't taking Heroic. We're going to take our, you know, life coach, uh sports scientist type chap instead but that's not a bad thing guys because he was there when we won esl pro league it's the same setup and they went and they had a really dour cologne and finished seventh to eighth and the community went lol heroic are onliners they're onliners they're cheating and they're onliners la 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 then it came out that um hunden had been in talks with Astralis, right? Uh, and Astralis are, there's a, there's a lot of background here. Astralis, not only are their local rivals that Heroic had literally leapfrogged over in the world rankings when they won ESL Pro League, they also were the team that Heroic cheated against, that Hunden cheated against. Uh, and so they got wind of that uh and nicola nyholm the owner of astralis publicly tweeted i want hunden to come to the office and look my players in the eye and say that these players are under his command didn't know about it and i want Cadian to come as well and we're all gonna come and i'll 
We'll have fisty cuffs in the car park. And so Heroic denied having any knowledge and said, look, we're not responsible for Hunden's actions. Hunden's actions don't reflect what we did. Sorry. But Hunden, despite being a bad guy in the eyes of Nicola Nyholm, now had been in talks to replace the legendary coach Zonic, the best coach to ever do it, and was going to join Astralis. And so, as we now know, as I told you, probably, what, when the saga first started? What are we talking now? Six weeks? I told you at the start. This cunt leaked strats to his future employees, employers. He took Heroic's folder of tactics and gave it to them. Said, here, have access to this. Which is bad for a number of reasons. One, he was still employed by Heroic. Two, he was in talks with Astralis, i.e. a financial inducement. Three, both teams were competing at a tournament at the same time. Four, they played each other at the tournament. So at the very least, the, it would subvert at least one match. And so Hunden knew this was going to come out because Heroic complained. They told ESL. ESL told ESIC. ESIC started investigating. ESL conducted their own investigation. Hunden always want to go first like a fucking rat trying to save his own skin. Came out and said, you're going to hear some rumours about me, guys. <laughs> you're going to hear some rumours. And the rumours are that I leaked strats to a rival team that I will mysteriously not name, even though we all fucking know the only one it would be was Astralis. And I, and I didn't do that. I only leaked anti-strats. Which, as of today, people think anti-strats aren't shit. Apparently, a coach being able to look at how another team plays and come up with a counter-strategy, that just means nothing if a coach can do that. I learnt today. So, so apparently, go fuck yourself, coaches. And, and good IGLs that come up with anti-strats. It ain't shit. We can all do it. Not my opinion. The opinion of multiple prominent figures and players in the scene. Uh, after Hunden said that, all of a sudden, Heroic released a statement going, that's not true. You'll find out it's not true. Isik released a statement. We're doing an investigation. Then they had to delay the investigation. Then Hunden, wanting to get ahead of the investigation, sat down with TV2.DK or whatever the fuck it was and started doing this interview where it's like summing out a motherfucking Dr. Phil. He's even crying in it. <laughs> I'll show you a clip. And in that interview, he said that first, Isik didn't even give him a chance to respond. And that they threatened him if he'd appealed. And so that's where we got up to as of today. And I thought, I'm going to wake up, find out that Hunden's been banned for two years. And that's just it. But no. It's esports. So we gotta fucking load up the car, stick fucking 50 people in the back seat, get the juggling balls out. Did you bring the confetti, Dave? Yeah, I did. Who's got the spring loaded snakes? Me. And away we fucking go. <laughs> esports, baby. So let's get into it. So this is where we end up. This is the. Uh, abridged HLTV report by Stryker over at HLTV. Have a cold zero up there while you're there. Uh, Hunden implicates teammates in coaching bug scandal. And so one of the things he did as he was going out, he wanted to go out swinging for some fucking reason, right? And he said in this interview, some players knew I was using the bug. I will not give any names though, because I think it's up to the players themselves. Right? Now, 
I'll be delicate about this. I'll be very delicate, guys. Right? So, Hunden is a provable and self-admitted lying piece of shit. He is a self-serving, deluded narcissist. Everything he says for the rest of his life should be met with suspicion. I think that is all objectively agreed upon. Do I think he's lying that some players knew? Sorry, guys. I don't think he's lying now. And he's definitely lied before, as we'll get into. And I don't think we'll ever be able to prove it. But I think probably most of the coaches that abuse the bug, to get the most value out of abusing the bug, you have to let the players know. At the very least, the IGL's got to know where you're pulling the information from. My coach is making calls. Yeah, you might want to just uh, not go to banana for a bit. Like, you might want to, yeah, yeah, give that a fucking wide. But, uh, yeah, re I reckon we go mid this round. Like, how do you know? First question I'm thinking, how the fuck do you know? And I don't. I'm reading the game. I'm playing the game. Why are you in my ear telling me this? And so as a result of that, I reckon after the game, I go, how the fuck did you know not to go banana at that time? And tell In fact, actually, every time we went banana... We, we, were, we were good to go, or we weren't good to go. We had godlike raids. How did you do that? And the coach goes, listen, mate, there's a fucking in-game bug. And I was sat there, and I was hovering above fucking oranges. I could see the whole fucking thing. And so every time they were on banana, I could see it, and that's what I was telling you. And I go, all oh, right, okay. Well, if you ever get that bug again, and we're playing Inferno, do let me know. And that's that. Now, you are complicit in cheating. But after the fact... And you know about it and you didn't report them. So they're your two crimes. Do I think that's plausible? Absolutely. fucking lootly Do I think that's likely? Absolutely. fucking lootly Can I believe it coming out of Hunden's mouth? Afraid not, boys. Afraid not. Because he's a provable liar. No one should take this cunt seriously at all. Especially as he contradicted himself. Right? He said... And I know HLTV did write this up. So don't make me go to the DeSerto report where we did. Um, oh, he did do it. Yes, here it is. In a written statement, at the times it went to Isik, he said, I acted alone and without my teammates' knowledge. And then again, in another sit-down interview with TV... 2.dk said listen uh, when astralis accused the players of knowing hunden said no astralis can just eat my whole asshole i did it all by myself he said he didn't say it like that but he, he probably was thinking that right because everyone loves jay-z so so he's <laughs> he's admitted that he's a liar if he's telling the truth this time. And this is the problem, guys. I even tweeted this out. Right? You, you, you People don't get it. This is why integrity matters. This is why you have to fucking always think about where you're going to put yourself and what you're going to say, which side you're going to stand on. Right? What you're... Like, it all matters. It's all connected. It's all connected. And so I tweeted it out. I said, remember that time I swore I told the truth? I was lying. But I'm definitely not lying this time. I swear it. All your solemn vows, all your claims, all your appeals, they are meaningless now. You are a liar. You will always be a liar. You cannot get that back. And so my viewpoint on this on him swinging as he goes down like yeah the players the players were involved i didn't act alone which but can i just say as well right somebody made a point on reddit and said yeah well this always happens it's like when you know criminals get caught and they get given a harsh sentence so they rat out everyone else in the gang well, no, it's not like that, mate. It's not like that at all. Because your cooperation gets you years off. 
Isik didn't even know about it. Hunden never went to Isik about the players doing it, by the way. Not even here. He told TV2.dk first. He told the public first. Why? Because he doesn't care about integrity. He cares about hurting heroic. That's his whole fucking MO. I don't know why he's got to be in his bonnet. I don't know what they did. I'm going to assume absolutely fucking nothing except say you're not joining us, Rallis. So I saw people saying, well, yeah, he's going to give them up and get years off. No, that's not even on the fucking table. If anything, Isik should go back and punish him for lying in the first investigation, you mad cunts. That's against their code of conduct. Didn't see a lot of people pointing that out. Sponge, of course. Good old intelligent Chad. Thank fuck for him. You know. Didn't see a lot of people pointing out he lied to an investigation if this part is true and therefore should receive a punishment for misleading a fucking investigation into competitive integrity. So, that's got to be remembered. The other, the other component about this, let me just say, while I want to catch as many cheaters and wrongdoers and bad people and all that in esports, and I've been trying to do it for, you know, a decade and a half and all that bullshit, right? I don't want anyone to investigate anything Hundam fucking says. This is the worst kind of snitching. This is fucking pathetic. This is essentially like, you could have had some credibility on the way out and you, you've even chose to surrender that. You know, we could have always said, well, at least he did do some good. He was a cheating piece of shit and a liar and a narcissist. But no, you're also a fucking snitch rat cunt now on top of that. Because you're not even snitching for the right reasons. You don't care about integrity. You don't care about fixing the problem. If you did, you would have gone to ESIC. You would have recanted your statement. You would have given up the names. You don't, you're don't. you not doing any of that. You're just trying to hurt other people on the way out. I'm being punished, so why not them? Let me tell you, that it's like fucking Starscream. You're so fucking pathetic. You're like that. That kid in school who gets caught flicking bits of paper and then you go oh but billy was doing it as well i don't give a fuck about billy i saw you doing it dickhead and you trying to embroil billy and it makes me fucking hate you more star scream ass motherfucker so this type of snitching fuck that there ain't no there ain't no there ain't no good coming out of that not to mention, I can't believe you. Key number one, I cannot believe you. So he did that, right? So that was nice. Then, he also said that Isik had done this, like, outrageous, oh, Isik were threatening me, Right? And, of course, he's absolutely lied again. He's, he's spun it and twisted it. So this was the other aspect. He comes out and he says, Oh, Brian, I've never been heard in the case. Never been heard, he says. Imagine that. Now, as I said on By the Numbers just the other night, Oh, and you got the VOD super quick this time, didn't you? Because me and Sam want to get fucking loaded. The right motivation will get the work done. You fucking jackals. So anyway, Hunden speaks out about Isik investigation. I've never been heard in the case. I said, if Isik hadn't heard him out, it would be an outrage. If you are accused of something and you are to be punished, you must have a chance to answer your accusers. Of course, Hunden had that chance. We'll get to that in a minute. He also said, I'm deep. I'm deeply saddened that Isik chose not to hear me out because I believe it's a huge case. I've never been heard. The only thing Isik has done is threaten me by saying that if I choose to appeal the verdict, I'll be given a five-year ban instead. And I said that's also outrageous because you must have the right to appeal, and the right to appeal must not be like contingent on the understanding. If you don't appeal, we'll give you a lesser sentence because an appeal has the potential to absolve you. You cannot presuppose the outcome of an appeal. So I said, I would crucify Isik live on stream if they'd done that. And I let them know, by the way, I don't fuck about. I told them, if you've done that, boys, 
you're going to get your f- first taste of R- Richard Lewis fire. And they said, he's full of shit, though. And I said, yeah, of course he is. <laughs> he's under. His name is now synonymous with lying and being full of shit. So they addressed it in their in their report. Their report got delayed because they had to fucking release all of their fucking shenanigans. All, they had to address all of his shan- shenanigans and all the bullshit and all the lies because he's doing his la- he's doing his farewell tour. Like guys, I'm out of the game. I've totally fucked up my career. I- I'm just gonna milk it by having a series of TV fucking interviews, like which again narcissism it's a hell of a drug so i'm gonna get i'm gonna show you the page where they specifically address it right i think it's this one yep Mr. Peterson's claim that Isik chose not to hear him out. This statement by Mr. Peterson is false. Prior to any publication of the decision in this statement, Isik contacted Mr. Peterson on 19th of August 2021, making its intentions known to him via email and providing him with an invitation to respond. Since that time, Isik has engaged with Mr. Peterson, inviting him to respond on more than one occasion to Isik's intended charge ahead of the publication of any release. To date, Mr. Peterson has failed to provide Isik with any reply of substance relevant to the charge made against him. And then suddenly, when you put the pieces together and you look at that, you realise, wait a minute, Hunden's not even good at lying. You said they didn't hear you out. In your next breath, you say when you spoke to them, they threatened you with five years if you appealed. So they have heard you? You were in contact or weren't you? Because it kind of feels that there was a channel of fucking communication open if they threatened you. All right, okay, you're just full of fucking shit. And then you get into, well, what does he mean? Where did he pull this idea of the threat from, okay? He said, Mr. Peterson's claim, the only thing Isaac has done is threaten him by saying that if he chose to appeal, he will be given a five-year ban. This statement is false. Mr. Peterson was offered, as a matter of written record, a plea bargain, which they do, in good faith, in accordance with Article 7.5.4 of the Code of Conduct and Article 4.6.1 of the Code of Conduct, at the discretion of the Commissioner that he remains free to contest by way of any appeal to an independent appeal panel. The NOC and the accompanying covering email dated 19th of August 2021 was in effect and appropriately an offer of a plea bargain, allowing Allowing Mr. Peterson the opportunity to accept the decision or appeal it at the risk of costs of a more onerous sanction and at the discretion of the independent appeal panel. So in other words, it said, and I know because I know how ESIC structure their emails. Let me tell you, when Hunden said the only thing they have done is threaten me, he's referring to the one email they sent that he didn't reply to where it said, I have to make you aware that this set, this uh, offence carries a maximum five-year sentence and we could award that on appeal if your appeal is unsuccessful. That's not the same as threatening you, is it? That's not the same as saying don't appeal, an express invitation to appeal and letting you know the risks of said appeal. That's how much... Of a fucking greasy liar, this guy is. And if he thinks that that is in any way improper, I hope he doesn't get jammed up in the legal system. Spoiler, Heroic is still steaming ahead with their lawsuit. So you might want to have a look at how legal letters are structured. I certainly recommend you retain counsel instead of talking to a Danish tabloid rag, my good friend Nikolai. But anyway, that is how you have to structure an appeals letter. I know again. I've done this for people when they have disciplinary action. Know that on appeal, your sentence can get worse if new evidence comes to light. Because of course it could. 
that there is an inherent risk of any appeal. So literally, he now, as a matter of public record, in an attempt to discredit ESIC, the one body that are trying to clean up this fucking shithole that is esports, aside from a few good journalists with no fucking remaining brain cells or will to live, right? He's trying to discredit them, and he's got the pulpit of one of the biggest tabloid publications in Denmark to do it. And he's shamelessly doing it. And I will say once again, I openly invite you, good friend Nikolai, give me the emails. Send them to me, and if they are threatening, I will publish them and I will be on your side. I know you won't, because you're a fucking liar. And I know Isik wouldn't let leave themselves out to dangle like this. You got a standard outline of appeal letter. So, two years. Let's, um... Let's have a debate about two years. Two years as a punishment. A two-year ban. ESIC, of course, uh, are, you know, the governing body, essentially, the closest we've got to it. Two-year ban means he can't play in ESL for two years. Can't play Dream Act for two years. Can't play in ESA for two years. Can't play in Blast for two years. Ascent, well, I say play, coach, obviously, as well. All of that, you can't. You, you, you can't be part of any of those leagues. And in essence, in much the same way, if you play in one of those franchise leagues, E6 reach now territorially across all of the leagues that it works for and represents, essentially does end your career for two years at least. You're a coach. I don't see why uh, it should mean the end of your career. You know, you can come back in two years. Hopefully CS is still here. But, you know, maybe you can go and coach in Valorant. Just join the Exodus. Just to bring up Lord of the Rings, at the, like, again. Like all of the cunts who went to the Greylands at the end. Like, oh, yeah, we've killed Sauron now. You sorted out the Warragon, yeah. You tidy up the mess. We're all going off to a place where we can't die. Don't follow. Mr. Frodo. Yeah, I'm off. See ya. I've had enough, Sam. Cheers for saving my life multiple times as I go up that mountain, but I'm out. Peace. Um, that's what they're doing in Valorant. They're off to the fucking... They're off to the Greylands on those boats shaped like swans, I think. Off they go. You've never seen them again. Right? Hunden can do that. No one's stopping him doing that. Certainly not at the moment. Right? But... Here's the one thing I'll say, and as always, I don't just say things to to you or public. You know, I, I I believe things, and I try and use my reach to make sure that the people I talk about understand my point of view before I talk about it. If there is a window of that open, because I'm not doing it to be malicious or attention or clout seeking. I serve the realm. So I told Isik, yeah, the only real criticism I can see that should be levelled at you, well, could be levelled at you, is two years. Is two years too harsh? And when you compare it to he got 12 months for actually cheating, well, is what he did worth two years? That seems to be the crux of a lot of the objections. I think if they'd given him a one-year ban, all the terrible takes that we've seen on Twitter today aren't even there. I think everyone goes, yeah, fair enough, do we, yeah. But the issue you have is this. Um, I've seen a lot of people say, it's just a contract issue. No, it is definitely very much specifically an integrity issue. Very much. Because let's just outline it again, right? He got pissed off with his team, his employer. He took their strats, their tactics, some of which he created, some of which he didn't. He prevented them from having them while they were playing, while sharing them or attempting to share them, because the only reason Astralis aren't embroiled in this is they didn't open the folder with his new employer or prospective new employer. It's a tournament they both were playing at and were both set to play each other. So what should the punishment be for that? 
I think in real sports, if a, if a sports coach had done that, I think no one would blink at two years. But the problem you've got is, yeah, if we're giving out 12-month bans for cheating and people view this as a lesser offence, usually because they don't understand it, then two years might seem harsh. Now, I could get on board with making that argument. Two years is a long fucking time in esports. And I'll tell you, I don't think ESIC realised that. When I see a five-year ban, that may as well be a lifetime ban, really. I mean, shit. Some games don't even last five years. So maybe they do need to scale their bans down rather than using sports lengths of bans. But am I going to waste my energy <laughs> making that argument for Hunden? I'm not. I ain't going to bat for you, homie. You're, you've essentially lied to me and everyone else in this scene more than once. I don't support what you did. I was willing to give you the benefit of the doubt like everyone else. This is a slap in the face. I, take, I do take it personal. You know, think about all the other people that have been actively condemned for cheating and violations of integrity and not following the rules. I mean, fuck, think about the crucible device went through over that anonymous replay bullshit and the hate device got way worse than the hate Hunden got for, for literally cheating. So we're out of whack as a community and that's reflected in the opinions. I ain't coming out for you, mate. I ain't white knighting for you at this point. So if two years is harsh... I respect that opinion, but I certainly will not amplify that opinion or express that opinion. And I certainly wouldn't, even if I believed it, because I just won't waste the energy on supporting a, a, a cheat like that. Right. So let's get to uh, what essentially happened. I saw so many people denying... You know, oh, Richard, it's just anti-strats. It's just anti-strats. Heroic. Oh, actually, before we get into this development, should we have a look at the, uh, should we have a look at the crying? Should we have a look at the Dr. Phil? We all love a bit of Dr. Phil. Let's, let's look at the Dr. Phil. Because they've done a great job editing it. It will make you sympathise. It's like, you know, them porn games <laughs> where it says, try not to come. Try not to sympathise. This clip will make you pity him. It's like that. That's what they've done, right? So. Wait, is my headset not looking? Uh oh, uh, let me just jump up here. Tiny Rich. Det var forbundet med store følelser, da hunden lagde kortene på bordet over for TV2 Sport. Det er i hvert fald ikke sandheden, der er blevet fortalt i, i interviewet med dig. Uh, just watch that one more time. Det var forbundet med store følelser, da hunden lagde kortene på bordet over for TV2 Sport. Det er i hvert fald ikke sandheden, der er blevet fortalt i, i interviewet med dig. Uh, spillerne var klar over det. Nogle af spillerne var klar over det. Uh, Jeg vil ikke sætte navn på i dag. Jeg synes, det er op til spillerne selv. Nikolaj Hunden Petersen modtog sidste år en straf på 8 måneders udelukkelse for sin udnyttelse af den såkaldte coachbog. Og for blot to... What's great about it as well is, this is all meant to be part of the great apology tour. And he's actually posing for all fucking b-roll and stuff. Like, like, mate, come on. To måneder siden sagde træneren sådan her i et interview med TV2 Sport. Spillerne vidste ikke noget. Jeg handlede på, på min egen øh, bekostning. Hvorfor skal jeg så tro på dig den her gang? Du skal tro på mig den her gang, fordi at jeg ikke længere er på kontrakt i Heroic. Øh, holdt sig I'm a cheat. Og efter at der blev sendt til nye forklort hundens påstande og karakteriserer deres tidligere analyse nyt. Heroic afviser over for TV2 Sport hunden. This was the statement from Heroic, uh, where they basically say, you know, look, uh, he, he, he said that he acted alone. Now he's lying out of spite. I hope people can see that. 
as, as being the motivation. So. Påstande og karakteriserer deres tidligere træner som en bitter mand. Men TV2 i situationen, det er tydeligt at se, at Kåre til at sige, at vi har så lige nu. Er, er du ud af sporten? Ja. Du er ikke tilbage? Lige nu er jeg ikke tilbage, nej. I like that. I feel like it's that clip from The Simpsons. In it? Could you... Check it out, Lee. You can see the moment his heart actually breaks. Det på at hunden sanser lige nu er helt tyndslitte. Jeg hænger heller ikke sammen længere. Det er altså lige nu der er der ikke noget der kommer stærkt for mig efter det her. Er, er du ud af? Ah, and where? Ah, and there it is. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Setting in. Lige nu er jeg tilbage nu. Ah, fuck my life. Ah, uh, fuck my life. Yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. There it is, a real tear jerk out. I mean, how can anyone have any fucking sympathy for this guy? How can he assume anyone's going to have any sympathy for him? Um, I certainly don't have any sympathy for him, even speaking as a former friend, someone who knew him, someone who, you know, knew him in the scene for years, going all the way back, was even sort of moderately open to a redemption arc for him, uh, despite the fact I even said at the time, it's not really all that cool, that heroic kept him on. Uh, but anyway... He maintained the whole time, oh, it was just the anti-strats, sir, uh, just the anti-strats. And at the time, right, he even said, okay, uh, sharing anti-strats is essential for my development as a coach. And all coaches do it. And the fucking peanut gallery, right, that's where the morons live among the peanut shells. They all went, yeah, that's true, that is that. That, that. that is true. That is true. All coaches share anti-strats all the time. And I know that because I'm a Reddit cunt and not, and therefore, n never been a, a high-level tier one coach. But but I, if Hunden says it, if Hunden says it, it must be true. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously... I've never heard of it. To put, to put it in context, I managed teams, right? Managed teams, coach teams, been a event journalist. I have hung out with players, had many close relationships with many players down the years, been at many after parties with all the players, talk to players, always been a resource for players whenever they get into trouble, help them out with contract snafus. I've been a host, I've been a commentator, a, you know, award-winning journalist, lifetime achievement award recipient in esports, 17 years in the business. Never heard of it. Not once. Not once. Not once. That, that again, all of that experience, all of that time, not once. You understand. Neither's Duncan. Not once. So this thing that happens all the time and everyone knows it happens and everybody knows it happens and it's okay that it happens and everyone not once have i heard this but you elite sniper wolf fucking 42 send feet pics please 28 you know all about it i guess so absolute grade a bullshit and then the other line of argument was well anti-strats they're not as important as strats now strap me in and take on a gurney like hannibal lecter and fucking take me away if that absolute false narrative is adopted as fact by anyone because here's what an anti-strat is. First of all, an anti-strat is a strat, <laughs> right? What do you mean? An anti-strat is a counter-strat that you come up with. So your opponent's strats don't work against you. It is something you use in lieu of your playbook, essentially, to guarantee a win against a particular type of opposition. So, 
People were going, oh, it's just anti-strats, bro. I would argue that coming up with essentially a playbook of how you want to play and to how to do optimal things on a map, I would imagine that's the baseline for any IGL, any coach, anyone that's in charge of the playbook. Sitting down and figuring out a way to counter somebody else's strats while still being able to execute a game plan of your own, that's more complicated. It's like, I watch NFL, right? You're watching in real time an offensive coordinator and a head coach work together to figure out how to break down a defense. And then you watch a defensive coordinator in line with a head coach in real time figure out what defense is going to be the most effective, what type of coverage is going to be the most effective, you know, what type of... To, to stop them scoring against you. It's reactive. It's high-level shit. But loads of people said this. Richard, it's just anti-strats, bro. All right. And yes, thank you, JB. You read my mind. And so I just want to remind everybody that the same people who were going, it's just anti-strats, bro. We share them all the time, bro. Everyone does anti-strats, bro. I heard about it, bro. Yeah, Hunden said it, bro. All of those guys that were saying it, including many players, were the same people in the same union, in the same association, that did the only active boycott in CS history because a, a commentator or analyst might hear a recording of them giving strats and then go and anti-strat them. Them. So how were anti-strats the most important thing in your fucking life? How were they so important we had to boycott the blast just six fucking months ago and now it's just anti-strats bro. You people are fucking morons. You people are fucking morons. You cannot even be consistent over a 12-month period. You can't do it because you have no fucking brains. You shot your load over that. Not player rights, not salaries, not event conditions. This m demented hypothetical. And then, it's just anti-strats, bro. It's uh, Hunden's just giving away anti-strats, bro. Oh, do you know what it's like to be the only person with a memory in this foul business? It will break you. So, even that argument, which by the way, it's just me saying fucking checkmate and flipping the board over. Shut the fuck up. No one has a counter to that. No one can explain how the very same people who were up in arms about it, the same people saying this decision is too harsh because it's just anti-strats, were literally talking about the concerns of recordings potentially giving away anti-strats. The same, not different, the same people were saying this. So I've just won. That's just checkmate. Why don't we fast forward to the fucking reality we actually exist in where it wasn't even just anti-strats? strats so that was irrelevant you died on a hill that wasn't even real you fucking morons you died on a hill that didn't exist because heroic released another statement and remember they are in active litigation they're in active litigation any lies they commit to the public domain while they're in a lawsuit pretty fucking bad and i'm not talking about oh you do a little wrangle here you jazz it up here you make an you know you make a suggestion here like how a certain lawsuit refers to me as an internet personality over an award-winning journalist because if i had the credibility of being an award-winning journalist it would actually harm their case so you can be clever with language the one thing you don't want to do is tell an out and out fucking lie because then it is g fucking g that lie will come back and haunt you it will haunt you in court so when oh there he is crying again isn't it beautiful so when heroic put this fucking statement out right let's have a read right okay there he is michael jackson back before the the problems right let's have a look okay 
based on requests related to the content of the strategy document shared with with our competitor by Heroic's former head coach, Nikolai Hunden peterson we wish to provide some clarification. The files that we so far know for a fact were shared were not developed by Mr. Peterson alone, but in a joint effort with the Heroic players. Some of the documents were both created and owned by the players themselves on our Google Drive. The content of the documents reveal what our team looked for, how we think, how we outplay our opponents, both in various map settings and sides in the game. It describes our philosophies in specific scenarios, such as mid-round calls, when X and Y happens, and how we want to abuse and manipulate rotations. In aggregate, this provides a lot of information about how we think as a team. The documents cover far more than where opponents like to stand and what setups they use. They give detailed instruction on how we act versus set teams, how we want to play versus specific smokes, and what exactly we look for in our preparation, which of course can be manipulated in the wrong hands. These files are built upon knowledge from all of the heroic players, which is written out in detail across several files. Our players also highlight the impact of Mr. Peterson restricting access to this folder a deliberate action which limited our ability to prepare and hence our chance to perform our best at this year's IEM Cologne. We strongly support E6 view that this type of action in isolation is a breach of integrity and is nothing any employer or esports organization should expect from team members, particularly not from a head coach. Also, as would be the case with any business or corporation, Heroic's contracts specify all IP produced within the contract period is owned by Heroic. Mr. Peterson's first and only assignment as a professional coach was with Heroic. So, I add, I don't care about your little contract dispute, and neither does Isik, by the way, didn't mention it once, that my purview, their purview, integrity in our sport. Now, it that playbook, as described, not only being denied to the team, but being shared with a rival that was playing them at the tournament, right, who could have given it to anyone else without it being tracked. Does that violate the integrity of the tournament? Does it? I will give you all a moment. Not you, viewers. The morons that stumble across this video in an archaeological future after I've left. Does does it? Yes, it does. Inarguably. There is no... Uh, it does, it's just any stretch, bro. It's just any stretch. Turns out, if, the, if, if you want to encompass all of that as just anti-strats, turns out you have a weird fucking idea about what anti-strats are and how important they are. Because I would tell you, if you have all of that information and you still can't beat that and you know they know that about you, and you still, still can't beat that team, you're just dog shit compared to them, aren't you? The idea as well, that I've seen uh, on Reddit is that heroic are themselves shady, right? That they've done something wrong. Because when morons see two parties argue and they're not really invested in the outcome, if the argument goes on long enough, what always happens online with esports fandoms that have attention spans of a fucking fruit fly and an IQ to match, they just go, shit, why don't you shut up about it? I want the new content. What's the new drama? What's the new drama? It's boring now. You're both shady. And that's it. They just fucking file you both under cunt. So any protracted fucking PR war, both parties lose. So you have to be super careful about where you go, when you go, what you say, how definitive it is, or you end up with mad situations. As I said, like the battle between Reginald and Sean Gares surrounding the PEA. Sean Gares, beloved IGL, all-round great human being, super cool dude that was in a bad position, but he mistimed his PR offensive and got fucking TSM'd, right? And, and to this day, doesn't understand how that happened. Sometimes you can have, and yeah, and Drop Dead Gorgeous, you can have all of the right information, you can have all, you can have it all, you can be in the right, you can have the proof that you're in the right, but the timing in which you release it matters, and if you have to keep releasing it and keep coming back to the fight, you automatically lose anyway. So then, we, we get to the fucking take machine. Now look, Twitter makes fools 
of us all. Twitter makes fools of us all. Be under no illusion, right? Twitter is not a good medium for discussion. How could Twitter be a good medium for discussion? The central premise of it is this. It is that you follow people whose opinion you potentially value. They say things in a limited character format which cannot be edited retroactively, which they say is for the purposes of accountability, right? You then put out that opinion and the way it works, the way the information is spread it is literally about whether or not the take is deemed to be outrageous, salacious, sensational. The, the wilder the opinion, the further it spreads, the more people come to disagree with that opinion to show to their followers, I fundamentally object to this, and then their followers, and their followers. So you end up essentially with, even in isolation, a poorly expressed opinion becomes some sort of hugely like egregious sin and on the other hand you know certain opinions are just positively reinforced no matter how bland how vanilla how trite how glib lacking insight just because of who they are said by a popular person's opinion is literally weighted heavier on twitter a verified user's opinion is weighted heavier on twitter so how can we have a good discussion about anything via a medium like that. You can't. Again. Imagine a classroom where the most popular kid in school can shout down anyone else's opinion with a megaphone at any time they want. And then, you, right guys, let's have a discussion about class in America. <laughs> Whatever they think wins eventually the people that don't even agree with the cool kid with the megaphone will start to agree with the cool kid with the megaphone because they just don't want to have a megaphone being blared in their face that would be a terrible discussion forum we would we would acknowledge that twitter is that forum it's that forum for twats and influencers so that's before as well the the apparatus through which you have the debates are bad the fact as well most people don't even express their true opinions on twitter because why would you i've got shit to sell <laughs> i can't tell you what i really think uh yes this uh, is the best thing ever and uh i'm looking forward to working with activision blizzard to do their new card reveal you know obviously everyone's a grifter so whatever fuck it man let's all have a debate on twitter so i recognize that I recognize that, right? But let's just go into some of the crazy uh, opinions. Um, so this is from Striker at HLTV. Now, I'll also just add, right? I'll also just add, I believe in the right, you have the right to an opinion if you've earned it. So if I disagree with your opinion, but you've earned the right to the opinion through experience, expertise, commitment, you know, whatever it is. Have at it. I might think it's a dog shit opinion that doesn't hold up to any scrutiny. But I'm not going to say, what the fuck are you babbling about? Because at the end of the day, in the same way, I certainly have a right to an opinion about esports. The people I'm about to, I guess, mildly criticize, they have the right to an opinion too. They've certainly earned it. And who am I to deny them their right or to even imply that they might be objectively wrong in what is but a matter of opinions and discussion? Now, I've laid out the case as to why I think Hunden's bad. I've cleared up some of the misinformation that's out there, including Hunden's own lies. We are just left with the awfulness of the take machine. Uh, that is Twitter. So this is the first one from Striker. Again, not anybody I have an issue with, not anybody I'm criticizing, uh, not anybody I dislike, not anybody I want people to rile up and go and send nasty tweets to. Just somebody who has a different opinion to me that I fundamentally disagree with and I'm a little bit perplexed by the opinion. So Striker said, the fact, so first of all he's replying to peter also from hltv and these guys do a great job and where would cs go be without without hltv so he said hunden didn't lie that he only shared anti-strats as nothing else was specified here he has lied 
but Peter didn't know that. He got two years for that under a new made-up rule, and the commissioner likened it to an NFL coach sharing his team's general playbook with an opponent before the match. To which Stryker replies, the fact that Isak used the catch-all clause in combination with what is effectively a career-ending length sends a dangerous precedent in my eyes. Also, do we really think sharing anti-strats for other teams is more serious than cheating, for which he got 12 months? So, the first comment, Peter's, I'll discard, because he didn't have the information I did. I've known the whole time hundon has been lying about it just being anti-strats. That essentially it is all of those things that Heroic described. I've been privy to that information since before the ESIC investigation began. In the same way I knew it was Astralis and was hinting at that on By the Numbers before the investigation began. Um, so it's not Peter's fault. He's not as juiced in as me when it comes to certain types of information. It's not his job. He's not an investigative journalist. For strikers' opinions, the first one is the bad part, the, in my opinion. Uh, the idea that using a catch-all uh, uh, clause is bad is ridiculous. All sports have a catch-all clause. So, for example, the NFL didn't have a specific clause about don't uppercut your wife in an elevator, right? Obviously, they don't have a specific clause about that. But when Ray Rice did that fucking absolutely heinous act of domestic violence and it was caught on camera, the NFL had to go away and think about what they do and how they punish him because there was absolutely no way he was going to skate with that. So, they came back. They went with, he brought the league into disrepute. Then... They got together with women's rights groups and other stakeholders and they came up with like a, a, a now a blanket clause about domestic abuse and certain types of crime being perpetrated by NFL athletes. And that's a good thing. But they didn't have a specific clause for it. Now, if you don't have a specific clause for something, you... is it in the purview that we punish? So, for example, if I follow Stryker's argument, then we should immediately uh, unban I by power. There was no specific match fixing clauses or rules being presented by uh, um, by Valve saying that there would be any punishments for the majors. And in fact, uh, in CSGO, in fact, the only precedent that we had from Valve was the one-year ban they gave Solo for the famous 3-2-2 throw in Dota. So we would be right in assuming at worst it would be a year, and yet a lifetime ban was handed out with no specific rules. Now, I saw people at the time make that argument. I saw people at the time say, well, there was no specific rule about match-fixing from Valve. But we all know match fixing is wrong. All athletes know it's all wrong. So what did Valve do? They said, look, we all know all fucking competitors know fixing matches is wrong. These people fixed matches, used our in-game items as a cryptocurrency because of their associated value to throw the game. And so we're banning them for life from Valve events. So... Do we, do we have to go back and unban them now because Valve didn't have a clause there? Well, no, they hit them up with essentially... No, it wasn't even a catch-all. <laughs> it was just, you know. You know you have to have integrity. And nobody would make the argument. So all sports have to have a, a, a catch-all clause to punish people and things that happen outside of the things you would directly think to legislate for, like violations of integrity except you know, breaking rules you know etc etc so it's absolutely ridiculous also the idea that because it's a career ending length sets a dangerous precedent well i mean first of all the length of the punishment might be too long okay and that's why i don't disagree with his second point but at no point should anyone say well, if you issue a ban that's long enough to end a career, you shouldn't be doing that. Because it's mean. <laughs> like, I don't understand what the argument is. Yes, some people will be banned for lengths of time that will be tantamount to a lifetime ban in all but name. 
What else do you want to do? You know? Not to mention, Hunden is a 30-year-old man who's already had a playing career and already was well on his way to having a great coaching career that he himself fucked up by repeated violations of in integrity within the sports, which includes cheating, lying when investigated for cheating, and colluding with a rival team to essentially derail the competitive integrity of a tournament in exchange for financial inducement. I don't know what to tell you. That's why I can't go about, oh, and then lying about that. <laughs> so I don't know what to tell you. Like two years within the totality of what a giant piece of shit he is. Doesn't really feel that bad to me. Maybe I've got my own prejudices. Maybe I've got my own biases. As I said, I could be willing to make the argument that if he gets 12 months for cheating, he probably deserves 12 months for this too. But I'm not going to. I'm going to say good fucking riddance out of yours. So next up, Alex, who you know I like. Um, we did an interview recently. It's great content. Uh, he came out and said, what I don't understand is the information he shared isn't inside the knowledge if it's only an anti-strap. That's public information. So how does it threaten competitive integrity when anyone can watch the demos? And so this is another grotesque misinterpretation of what an anti-strat actually is, which is worrying because he's an IGL. <laughs> um, so I'm very surprised to see him kind of fall short of the mark. You see, the idea that watching a demo means you know instantly... I, I, look. To his credit, I think because he's a good IGL, he doesn't realize that not everyone can do what a good IGL does. And so the idea that I can, anybody can pick up a demo, watch how a team plays, watch multiple demos, and then come up with a counter strategy to neutralize that being effective. No, they can't. Most people can't do that. Spoiler, a lot of tier one coaches can't do that. A lot of in-game leaders can't do that effectively. It's actually a skill. And the point is, it's a skill for which Heroic have paid for exclusive rights to have. If It's one of the things that Hunden is being paid to do exclusively for Heroic. If it has no value, then no one should pay for it. Coach is just one aspect of the job, a huge aspect of the job. You, it's not there anymore, apparently. Anybody can do it. Why would anyone want to pay for a coach? Why not just get a pleb off Reddit to watch demos and say, yeah, they, they do this. So I don't think Alex is thinking like a pleb. But he needs to be thinking like a pleb. And it, and because he's not thinking like a pleb, he's accidentally made a real pleb argument. So then, Nato Suffix, who... I found him a little bit insufferable of late. <laughs> but he does make a good point here, so it's all okay. Uh, I had the thought today that maybe he shared the anti-strat he had against Astralis with Astralis. As in, hey guys... Those are your tells and things that aren't balanced. Yeah, you need to mollow B house when you peek with AWP because your B player mollows every other round. Yes, now you're getting it. Now, obviously, there's loads more to it than that. But yes, yes, yes. A player that can think. Woo. Incredible. That alone by the way at a tournament where they play each other is a violation of competitive integrity maybe not one worth two years who fucking knows but there's the problem in a fucking nutshell if you can't comprehend anything else there's there's the problem so those takes uh were terrible Sorry to do you twice, Alex, my old chum. You had a great game today, and you need to drop Jacini or if he's going to play like that every week. Um, but he said, he also did say, uh, sharing that isn't, is a breach, is a breach, sharing strats in the playbook is a breach of contract, not a breach of competitive integrity. And, and I, I again, I, that's the one that I feel is objectively wrong. 
for all the reasons I've outlined uh, on the stream. But again, no hate, only love. Uh, uh, Tommy, aka Lurpus, said anti strats aren't some complicated medical research that may be hard to repeat, etc. Any IGL could redevelop all of it by watching the demos, even if they don't have it memorized today. This is a nothing burger, in my opinion. Again, he's a former great IGL, thinking like a great IGL. You know, we right essentially, Astralis got a window in how an opponent they would play would play against them. And they got it, not that they couldn't figure it out for themselves, but they got it delivered to them in exchange for the promise of a job, essentially, <laughs> right? They got it delivered to them at a tournament where it was going to become immediately relevant. So it's not the idea that after the tournament, Astralis couldn't have sat down and recreated it. Yeah, of course they could. But there and then, it influences the competitive integrity of the tournament, and that is a problem. Um, so, but the one, the one point he has made in there is the idea it's a trade secret, probably a stretch, which I, again, agree with. Uh, but that's relevant to the lawsuit and not relevant to why Hundum was banned. Uh, so then there was that. What was the other one? Uh, players waded in. Remember the players that went on strike? Because anti-strats, somebody potentially making future anti-strats, that's worth a strike. Somebody leaking anti-strats is fine. Um, I still don't know how we uh, get there logically, but whatever. Rops, my beautiful beloved Rops. Isik Pundish Hunden just because they think it's wrong. What? Someone needs to investigate Isik. So, I love you, Rops. <laughs> I don't know anyone could say anything bad about you. You look like the Milky Bar kid. You've had an incredible career. You're phenomenally talented. You've never been embroiled in any drama. You had a quiet dignity about the way you went through all the cheating allegations. I, I really, really like you and really, really respect you. And I want you to have a great career and I wish you all the best. That is the dumbest thing you've ever said potentially um and i'll explain why uh but also remind you that it was on, it's in league with a fucking bulgarian team owner that was being investigated for match fixing who literally said who is the e sick we should call <laughs> the fucking what was it we should call the hague and the american government to investigate them you never want to be in line with that guy Never, right? But you are. <laughs> so, revise. So, here's what happened, okay? ESIC, the, ins the Esports Integrity uh, Commission now, used to be Coalition, now Commission, was essentially created because there was a need within esports to have somebody police all the integrity issues. Rops, I'm sure you know about it. I'm sure you must have played in a qualifier where you thought someone was cheating against you, or you played in a match where you were, ah, these are a bit easy to beat. I wonder if they place bets on themselves because they were the underdog and they're trying to get something out of it. I know for a fact you've seen people talking about rampant match fixing in North America. I know for a fact you don't like match fixers. I know for a fact you don't like cheaters, right? I know for a fact you don't like uh, people being held hostage you know, essentially by bad actors in the space. So if you don't like any of those things, how do we fix that problem? Well, we need a, we need a body that investigates them and then deals with them appropriately, issues punishments. So ESIC only has the authority we give them. But when you say, <laughs> right, someone needs, someone needs to investigate ESIC and what ESIC thinks is irrelevant. Well, forget the fact it was founded by people with like legal expertise in the world of sports that have handled sporting bans and sporting appeals, right? Forget that for a moment, even though it is relevant. Just forget it. We'll just keep it esports. 
every member that has entered into the agreement with ESIC to have them police, which is rising every day, and another reason why they're super slow in fucking delivering the punishments to the pieces of shit and taking forever to communicate with people, is they're also having meetings and expanding their reach, and, you know, they got the Mongolian esports fucking association joining up with them and things like this that's all happened recently. Um, you know... Everybody who buys into what ESIC does agrees ESIC have the authority to issue the bans that they do. In fact, tournaments you play in, Robs, like ESL and The Blast, literally don't even conduct their own investigations. They say, we can't, we're waiting for ESIC to do it. So, what ESIC thinks not only matters... It is essentially canon for what every esports org that is a partner of them thinks. Every TO. So, what they think does matter. And in general, what they think is pretty on point, isn't it? They think match fixing is wrong. They think people placing bets uh, is wrong. They think bribery is wrong. Uh, they think, you know, they, they think things like this, coaches acting improperly is wrong. Uh, th this is a good thing. And so maybe you can't see the scope of, um, you know, why what Hunden did is potentially damaging to, to the Cologne tournament. But they can. It's their job to. And maybe, sure, they do think uh, a little bit more in traditional sporting terms over esports, as that's their background. And maybe two years was harsh. And these are arguments that I welcome. Um, the reality is that what they think does matter whether you, you like it or not. And the idea that in issuing this ban, they've done something wrong and they themselves need to be investigated, is just fucking absurd and beneath you. Um, but if you do want to set up a committee that investigates ESIC, uh, yep, maybe you can use the CSPPA to do it. Uh, maybe because they've done so well so far at dealing with these issues. Um And then, I think this is the last bit of madness. Uh, and again, it comes back to uh, Peter from HLTV. Uh, the game will restart in one second. Uh, the, the, so he says... This ruling essentially sets a precedent for the future, which allows ESIC to define anything they want as a threat to integrity without anyone challenging them on it. Um, which isn't true. It, it, it doesn't do that. Uh, what it does... Do, I mean, ESIC do set the rules, but the idea that no one threatens them on it or challenges them on it is, is nonsense. All... Partner members have feedback, and if ESIC brought forward a ruling that was just egregiously stupid or unfair or penalties that, you know, were just so over the top uh, that it is to be unenforceable without huge backlash, forget the fact that they would essentially just lose the credibility and the authority in the eyes of the community, much like they did in the aftermath of the Australian bans, which, by the way, remember, ESCA fucked that up. <laughs> and and yet Isak have had to eat the shit publicly and the humiliation. Um and and you know, the bottom line is if I'm ESL and by extension therefore, you know, DreamHack and ESEA, because they're all owned by the same parent company. If I if I'm those guys and you do something that essentially fucks up my competitions or you ban a bunch of players, I'm gonna pull out and then ask yourself. Remember when ESIC showed leniency to players and teams literally violating stream sniping rules, protections around stream sniping, and having people in the room with players with their phones, 
which would be the optimal way not only to get live betting information, which you could communicate to players via a system of your own devising that would directly give them a competitive advantage, but also the multiple private cheats that work via injection through m fucking mobile phones, which we've known about probably for about 10 years now, right? What did fucking ESIC do? Did they go scorched earth? No, they came out and publicly said if we went scorched earth and enforced appropriate sanctions, we would essentially be banning the top 10 teams in the world. So what did they do? They held a meeting and talked it out and then Vitality still fucking broke the rules at the same tournament that meeting occurred at. And what did they do? They got fined $10,000 or boo fucking who. So the idea that Isik is some sort of authoritarian, totalitarian, nightmarish organization that nobody can challenge. When again, a year ago, I think it is now, maybe less, everyone was calling them pussies. Everyone was saying they were in the pockets of the big teams. Everyone was saying that they had no real authority and they were toothless. And here we are today, coming up with mad hypotheticals that season 8 e sick is going to go fucking Daenerys Targaryen. It's... I don't know where you pull this stuff from. The evidence completely says that's nonsense. I agree... We gotta be protective about press precedents and potential abuses, but trust me, ESL, the blast, ESEA, Dreamac, all of that, they're the ones that are gonna be challenging it. The teams, the players, they have a union, remember, they are contracted partners in all these leagues. they they are carrying all of the leverage, whether they know it or not. But in this instance it is deemed by enough parties that isik has acted appropriately so no you don't need to be worried about big big evil isik yet i'll tell you about it when you need to be i'll know i've been calling everybody out for fucking years including esl cs ppas everything else doesn't matter who they are doesn't matter how much you believe in the mission if they turn rot rotten i'll call them out this isn't it. This isn't the battle. This isn't the hill to fucking die on. As I said, half of your arguments are sp just are spurious and based on out-of-date information anyway. And so... I'll just give you as a palate cleanser the great sponge opinion. The great sponge tweets about this. I know he was very jacked up. Um... But for me, this is how you express opinions about this. Uh, and just in general, this is sort of how discourse should occur, even on Twitter, right? And so Sponge said, few lukewarm takes. Is he a liar and a cheater? Yes, <laughs> that much is more than clear. Should Hunter receive a two-year ban from the Integrity Commission for sharing undefined anti-scrap material that was never accessed? Probably not definitely a conversation to be had and again as i said two years is a punishment i did tell Isik directly you probably eat a big plate of shit publicly for the two-year ban and probably it is harsh especially given other sanctions not just for hundum but other players for other offenses so you know make a choice they felt two years was comfortable so far there's been no pushback from any stakeholders i don't even know if hundum's going to appeal right should Heroic be able to take legal action against Sundan for breaching contract and sharing info with a direct competitor and potential future employer? Yeah. Yep, no one no one was disputing that. Should Hunden face further punishment sanctions for lying back in September regarding his former teammates' involvement in the coaching bug exploit? Because Chad is the only other person that has the ability to remember things and think about things. Me, Duncan, Chad. Potentially another conversation that should be had. Now, regarding the fallout of heroic players being complicit to Hunden using the coaching bug, and if they willingly took advantage of it, release the evidence and let's get cooking. And so, where we leave the great, sprawling, meandering, clown-fest 
that is everything that relates uh to uh hunden i'll refer you again to pimp pimp obviously has a vested interest in this he is a danish esports legend he is one of the most popular cs streamers on twitch he's you know just a guy who loves esports and as always i shouldn't need to say this but such are the times i don't agree with everything he says uh, there are a lot of people i would endorse as human beings who have dog shit opinions in, in my opinion i'm sure there's a ton of people who go I like Richard Lewis. I wish he'd stop liking clips of Joe Biden in the throes of dementia every five minutes. But I just can't quit them, guys. So, you know, we all have our peccadillos. We all have weirdness, right? And not everybody agrees with everybody else. Agreement is over-fucking-rated, my friends. Find yourself some people you can get along with that have radically different opinions to you. Not dog shit ones, ideally. And just broaden your horizons and have some fun. There are some, which, as I said, if they're double standards and not opposing opinions, double standards are for cowards and liars and weaklings. Differing opinions that are robustly backed up by experiences, expertise, and evidence. Talk to those people, fill your boots, broaden your horizons, have a beer. They're more fun, the crazy ones. But let's talk about Pimp's uh, tweet. Here's what Pimp said. Uh, he said, look, to, to every media or uh, or person of interest who's reached out in regards to the London player scandal, I'm not in a position where I can... Uh, can or feel the desire to share the information to respect the sources and involved parts i don't have the evidence at hand i was just shown uh, and so this uh as i understand it relates specifically to the claim about the players being involved and who heard and who knew so as i said earlier in in the broadcast just on Hunden say so, no investigation should ever be started. If he can't pony up the evidence, shut the fuck up and go off to obscurity, please. You've done enough damage, and this is embarrassing and childish. That's my opinion. Dog shit or not. But if he's got evidence, give it to Isik instead of doing your little fucking media attention-seeking tour. Ooh, pity me, pity... No one does. Give the evidence to Isik to investigate and just zip it and fuck off. Because everyone's sick of it now, right? And as I said, do I believe a player or, or players knew? Yeah, fuck yeah. That's true for all of them, probably. It doesn't reduce it. But I think on some level, we all knew. Um, But the evidence that we would need is an audio recording... Or some sort of chat log. Right? If you've got those, share those. By the sounds of Pimp's tweet, and I am guessing here, but I'm generally good at inference based on language. It sounds like Pimp's been told which players and maybe even been shown some evidence that he's not in possession of that enables him to comfortably know which players did it and that they did it and in which case guys i'll say to the heroic players now i know you watch right listen uh just spare yourself the the time and the effort and the hassle if pimp seen some evidence that probably means hunden's got some evidence or someone else has some evidence it's not going to stay out of the likes of my hands or e6 hands for very long in the same way that that recording of the people planning to fix a match that recently resulted in five-year bans yeah it came out in september yeah it was made in september it was shared with certain parties in september and then when nothing happened you know what the person who made the recording did they found another journalist and then another journalist and then another journalist and then they reached out to other players and then the players reached out to me and on and on and on and on it goes and eventually it will come out the ever nobody can keep a secret in esports right if it's one worth keeping even less so this isn't worth keeping is it it's not worth protecting people that cheated it'll be harsh on heroic but 
the best thing to do unfortunately is step up and take your medicine now because i don't believe he's lying and i don't believe it's just an act of spite on the way out the door he you can't believe him because he is a liar that's not the same as thinking he's lying in this instance so i think uh if anyone's got that just it's gonna come out you're better off coming forward rather than riding it out uh maybe wait until the end of pro league and then come out and say all right it's a fair cop but we'll wait and see um and there you go so there will be more drama there will be more amateur hour bullshit nonsense because of this but it just it just shows you moving to the online era essentially killed our game because for 18 months and in 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 many ways it's a victim of covid yes but we had a lot of problems that we needed to address and get in and, and get ahead of as we went to the online era we needed more robust rules and protections around the integrity of games we probably needed to pro proactively revise the coaching role we probably needed to have a task force by esic to start watching ahead of time rather than having to go back and pay somebody to watch five thousand fucking demos and with with a piece of software we certainly needed to be up probably even though i don't like it as a concept recording the comms recording communications having better anti-cheat software we really needed to up our game and we didn't and as a result unfortunately and it's reflected in the opinions of the proles uh is that nobody trusts this era nobody thinks gambit's a great team i do most people are skeptical nobody thinks heroic are one of the most improved teams in world counter-strike i do the online era dictates that they're not some people even believe and i saw this opinion lords expressed that heroic deserve this in some way because by bringing hunden back it's the karma now and if he rats them out that's actually a good thing uh and so the whole thing is uh, uh you know just a mess it's a fucking mess uh ev the, e almost everyone in, involved in the the online era all these coaches players we, we don't even talk about the smoke bug and how that casts a huge shadow over people that were playing online because you could literally remove smokes for a large portion of the first year in the online era we don't know who did we never will it, you know it, it's it, it's it's a joke all of this is all of this online cs is meaningless uh, unfortunately not because i think it is but just because the majority of people will um and so it's it's sad because there's a lot of cool stories all of which are just overshadowed by our own inability to police ourselves and behave and actually treat the sport with the respect it deserves it's just every day just a new drama in cs none of it really all that interesting or engaging it's always someone caught match fixing cheating lying some drama around players some pathetic way a player gets cut and in the meantime orgs are pulling out or not coming in you know saw guild the other day not that i think they're going to be a big name but they literally said we were going to come in a cs but now we're just waiting and reassessing you know why would you pick up a cs team right now and especially when everything you read it's not just like the whole of esports feels like a bubble that's about to pop right now it feels like cs has peaked and is on its way down people are not playing there's no content in the game we don't know when we're going back to LAN. every every time i see a headline it's either someone accuses someone of cheating someone admitting to cheating so esic putting out a report about match fixing someone who was guilty of cheating doing a self-pitying farewell tour about how really they were the victim in all of this it's dog shit it's absolutely dog shit and on top of that we got the most boring version of the most exciting esport ever to be conceived. Valorant's crushing it. Valorant's already won, in my opinion. I think in two years I'll be vindicated. 
um, and only the, only an incredible major with incredible moments and an incredible crowd and an incredible story can turn even begin to turn it round. So, as always, that's where I'm at. But I keep it real, like Dave Chappelle.